So, after having a lot of stuff to cover for the English side of the game last week, we're back on the Japanese server because we still have three more decks to cover from this last Limit Break set. So there's quite a few interesting things to talk about, and today we're going to be dealing with Azel. So Azel is the reason why I essentially rushed rank last season and got to top 50, and we're going to look at the deck right now. I'm going to go through the fight screen here actually so that we can take a look at it directly and then go into a game. But so Azel has a couple of variants, so you can see I didn't, I haven't really been taking rank too seriously this season. I've kind of taken a backseat because I don't really care about the Revere reward. And I wanted to just take some time to learn some new decks. And yeah, so Azel has a couple variants and mine is one of them, which is this is kind of labeled as the high roll variant because it runs eight self damagers and nine crit. And so basically what this deck wants to do is optimally go first, um, crit your opponent early, and then use the self-damagers to give yourself limit break faster, and then basically rush your opponent with a bunch of, like, a big full field, and then essentially just hit them with a few crits and win that way. So we're going to take a look at some cards of the deck itself, and then we're going to break down uh, the strategy as we play. So the main card, this beautiful ranked SP, is Blonde Azel, who got a really huge buff in Zero. So in Zero, he has two skills, just like he does IRL. And so his first skill is... Limit Break 4, Cannon Blast 1. This originally was 2. And then you may look at the top 4 cards. This used to be just the top 1. And from those 4, you choose 1 and call it. And then for that turn, this unit gains the power of the called unit. And of course, this is not once per turn. So when you go to Limit Break 4, what you can do is Cannon Blast 4 times and call 4 units. Of course, sometimes it's okay to just call 2 or something, just to call your intercepts out. And then you can kind of go along from there. But Again, this is a really, really good ability because it's spammable, it's cheap, top 4 gives you a lot of choice, meaning you don't have to call your triggers. It's also deck thinning, meaning that you call out a bunch of your non-trigger units and then you have a higher chance to double crit your opponent, and just overall really good. Um, and then the second skill is the same as the real uh, life one, which is during your turn he gains plus 1k for each of your rear guards. Another buff he got is that he's 11k base, so he used to be 10k uh, in the real card game, but now he is 11, so that's also really good. Our backup grade 3 is the Garmor, so Garmor is the exact same actually, still 10k base, and break 4 when he attacks a vanguard plus 5k power, and then when placed you may counter blast 2 to search your deck for a grade 2 or less card and call it. So. This ability is quite good, especially the second one that lets you just search out anything and tutor it. Uh, so you can usually get yourself an Interceptor or call something like the Dindrain, which I wish I had more space for, uh, to Soul Blast 1 and draw a card when called from deck. So uh, other cards, of course, are the very important starter that is Criff. Uh, premium players will definitely be very much aware of this card because this is, you know, this did get banned as a starter in premium because of how good it is, and in zero it's even better. So Rearguard Circle, if your Vanguard is Bow Mains, then you may put him and your uh, Gareth into the soul, and then search your deck for a Blonde Dazel and write it, and then draw a card. So if, imagine if the draw card was printed on the original Criff as well, which I, mean, I guess now it kind of is because you draw a card from the Axel 2, but yeah, so that's that's the main thing. So you want to go first, you want to use this skill, you want to mulligan for your Gareth, who's just a 10k vanilla, as well as your Bowmains or Bowman. Uh, so these are both vanillas, but they're very, very important cards. Then our other backup grade 3, and this is where the difference in builds comes in, because in the actually best Azel build, you actually run a much more balanced trigger lineup, you don't run all these self damages. you still run a few, but not that many. You run more Dindrains, more uh, Vivians, more Lopier Shooters, more uh, Trips, and then you run for Pelinor. And Pelinor got a really nice buff in this game as well. So his limit break 4 is when he attacks on Vanguard Circle, you may return one of your rearguards back to deck, and then for that turn, two of your units get plus 5k power. Now, returning a rearguard to deck is actually quite good because you can call a great 3 and then return it to your deck. It goes to the bottom, of course, not shuffle, but you can shuffle later by an another ability like Azel's. And essentially, actually, no, I don't think Azel shuffles. I think there's something else like Lopier that shuffles. Uh, but anyway, um, so Pelinor's ability is nice because you can return triggers you know, your grade 3s. And then his second skill, which is the main impact of his of this card, really, is when he is called from deck, then if your opponent's vanguard is grade 2 or higher, you may place this unit standing on vanguard circle. And then he attacks, um, he basically becomes the vanguard, and then 
uh, for that turn he also gains plus 5k power plus 1 crit. So this extra crit is also really, really big because sometimes what people do is, especially like in, in, as I said in the good Azel build, this one is also good. This one, some tier lists will rate as tier 1 as well because of just like how strong it is at stealing games fast. Um, but otherwise you can sometimes even use Azel's skill to call the Pelinor and just push like this default natural crit that Pelinor gets, so that's also good. And then we play four of the Slagle uh, Edge, Double Edge. And so this is, uh, if you have four or more rear guards, kind of plus one, he gains plus 3k for that turn. So he's a 13k attacker. So we like that, you know, we like making nice columns with our cards. So then the important cards, of course, are the self-damagers. Now self-damagers work a bit different than uh, in the real card game. So how they work here is they have rear guard circle unplaced. If you have four or less damage, then you take the top card of your deck and put it into your damage zone face down. And then at the end of that turn, you choose one random card from your damage zone, but prioritizing face down ones and put it back to your deck. So you can basically spam a bunch of these, go to five, and then you can like double heal sometimes and then also heal from these. And so then you can go to really small amounts of damage um, with that. But basically their main use is to enable limit break really fast because Azel's limit break is really, really strong. Um, and so just for that one explosive turn, it's really worth it and then of course four perfect guards nothing new there and then the last few cards are one vivian i wish i had more but i only have one when our attack hits a vanguard you can almost want to, top, to call the top card of your deck so she can extend your attack so for example you attack with a rear guard to a pointless rear guard and then like with vanguard or, or whatever else to your uh, other rear guard and then vivian attacks vanguard and then she when she hits she kind of wants one gets you another attack basically on top of the previous rear guard so that's also very good and then um, we have Trip, so her skill is simple, when her attack, hit, attack hits a vanguard you counter charge one, so flip a damage back face up. And then finally we have Lop Ear Shooter, whose skill is when he's placed from deck you may discard one, and then look at the top three cards of your deck and call one. So helps you extend attacks, um, you can call him off the Vivian to extend, you can call him off the Azel to extend without wasting counter blast, so pretty good for those reasons. So let's just get into a game and take a look at how the deck works. This is, like I said, a high roll build, so it will not necessarily work every single game, but, um, you know, it's kind of like if you draw well, if you open, you know, your Criff and Bow mains, and then you can have a pretty solid chance. So, looks like we're going to be facing off against Remo, who says, when Link Joker comes out, then I'll get serious. <laughs> so that's pretty interesting. So here, ooh, we have a pretty interesting hand already. Uh, we don't have another grade one, so we're going to hope to draw into that. We do not... Ah, uh, this could be bad. This could be bad. We really need to draw into another grade one from these next two draws that we get from going second, so that we don't have to ride the Gareth and we can do the superior ride, of course. So that's going to be pretty important here. Of course, we're also going to have to not attack the first turn because we don't want to lose our starter to this Narukami opponent. And so that's going to be important in the matchup like this because the Lizard Soldier... Uh, does have the skill. Ah, we don't get it, but we have the Azel in the opening hand, so I guess it's gonna do for now. Maybe then we can actually attack and not worry too much, because we have self-damagers, we have ways to wiggle around this game, so I think we can actually go ahead and attack. We will lose our Criff, but we don't have a spare Gareth, and I'm not gonna, like, just bet on us drawing it. So I think we're gonna just basically go with it, see what we get here. You know, if our opponent takes it out, it's okay. So we're gonna have a good board to go with here, basically. Our opponent has to commit another rear guard here as well. He will commit the Garda, all right. And then we're basically gonna lose that poor sweet Criff, but that's okay. We signed up for that to deal that first damage now. As long as our opponent doesn't heal, it'll be okay. So he gets that free retire. Of course, if I had a Gareth, I would not have attacked, but as we have the Azel, it's not as much to worry about. And so I think it's pretty okay. So there's our one of Dindrain also disappearing and leaving us to feel a little bit sad, but that's okay. Oh, and we drew the Gareth. Uh, like I said, I didn't want to count on it. I really didn't don't like depending on you know these random top decks like that because I mean it's 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 a very small calculation when you think about it. It was three out of thirty. It was a tenth chance that we draw it, which is in incredibly low. Um, so I really did not want to bet on that simple. Uh, percentage so I think it's okay we've pushed into two damage and if he gives us even one more damage right now we're basically gonna get to uh, use our limit break because we have a self damager and so then we just need to thin our deck a little bit you know call out a bunch of stuff a bunch of intercepts uh, here he's gonna deny our intercept with this attack but maybe he'll get a trigger and put it on here and then still attack our bow mains. I mean I mm, he gets a crit so we're gonna go to limit break four uh, unless we heal of course but that's pretty threatening I don't 
often run into these uh, opponents that run crits in Narukami, so that's definitely pretty interesting, but he only has two cards in hand, which means that this could be easily punishable, and especially if we can check some crits, it's definitely going to be something to think about from our opponent's perspective as well. So we can still play down the self-damager because that that could mean that we're going to heal. Um, so let's play out the Blonde Hazel animation here. All right, so it's just as we remember it from the Limit Break era. That sharp chin. And I guess we can basically... I'm going to take a first damage, maybe... I don't know. I'm going to use a skill first. Let's count box one. Look at top four. We got a self-damager, but we got a Vivian. I actually like the Vivian here. It is a one of, so it's pretty nice if we can call it out. Uh, so I do like it for that reason. I will call out this self damager now, just to take it. Okay, perfect art goes down. That's okay. We'll survive even without it. Okay, here we have a lopier and a trip. I feel like I want to call down the trip. I'm gonna call it down here. So we're gonna call it like this. We get another intercept basically. Now we want some boosters from this. Actually, just one is enough. Hey, we get a self damager here as well. I'm gonna just call this behind the Vivian. And then we're gonna be able to do something about this. So we're gonna leave this as it is. 39 is a pretty big number that I think we can stay on. So let's go into the battle phase. Uh, so here what we're gonna do, I think is gonna be... I'm gonna attack like this. I think is the... It could be a play. We could also just go for Vivian. Um, but then actually there was no point to not... There's no point to do Vivian if we had a Kalmas for Azel, basically. Because now you would only use Vivian to extend an additional damage. And when, what I want to do is, like, obviously keep him at 3 damage. So what I want to do here is hit with this, not use the skill. So here, let's see. And then here I basically want to see a crit come out. So I still have 6 crits left in deck. And so from a 22 card deck, that should be pretty likely. If I don't, that's going to be pretty sad. We don't get it. Uh, which means this game could, might as well just be over right now. Um, simply because... We, I don't know, we still need to deal one more damage, but now we're in a very set position because I was essentially counting on the fact that we could check a crit there uh, based on how many we run, and then that way his perfect card would trigger and therefore he would not be able to go to 4 damage without uh, a self-damager. So this strategy is slightly backfiring, but we might still be able to push through in some ways. going to use that Death Scythe as well to get rid of our self-damager in the back. Uh, but does he have a booster to commit? He does, actually, so that's going to be pretty threatening. But here, he's going to have to actually attack Vanguard first to take out my front row. Otherwise, that Death Scythe won't be hitting much. So we're going to see here. Either has attacked Death Scythe first. He's going to attack here with that powerful uh, Helena in the back as well. Ooh, we see a perfect guard go down. So here, if I get a defensive trigger, which I do, and it's a heal. Thank you very much. Good doggo. Uh, now this Death Scythe column does not hit. However, he can do the Helena discard. He's not going to do it. That means he has a perfect guard. Okay, that tells me everything I needed to know. Very good. Okay, we draw perfect guard about damn time. So we're going to right skip here. And let's see what we can get from two kind of last on this Azel. We get a self damager, but I think I want to go for the Lopier here. And see what that can give us. So we're going to call it down here. I can discard, uh, I think, Garmore. I'm not going to be able to really use this much anymore, so let's get rid of Garmore here to look at the top three. Ooh, we could call out another Lopier Shooter. That's actually pretty good, too. I do like that. So let's call out another one. We can keep filtering our hand out. We have some great threes that we don't really care about having in the hand, so we're just going to drop them like this. And see, I guess the trip will do for now. <laughs> we're really getting all the great twos, but it's okay, because as you can see, we're really thinning deck like crazy, and we've only been through... 5 out of 13 triggers with an 18... We have 8 triggers with 18 cards left. So we can even potentially thin one more time. I think it might be worth it. I think it might be... I'm even debating calling down the self-damager so I can heal double. But I don't I don't think there's a high chance of that happening. So maybe I'll just stop here. And we're going to try to end it. Uh, let's see if that can work out or not. So let's hit with a Lopier Shooter. And then here we're going to attack with the other Lopier Shooter column and basically be able to, I mean, take out his perfect art. I mean, now he can't take any more damage and he cannot counter charge in his... Ah, the heal whiffs, of course, but it's okay. I knew that this would happen um, and that was a risk that I was willing to take and there's a perfect art activating as well. So now he basically needs to draw into anything. Um, he essentially cannot use Vermilion skill anymore because he used Death Scythe last turn and... 
That was actually a very weird management of cost, in my opinion. Looks like he might have actually drawn into another perfect guard there, as he didn't call it. There's another perfect guard, so that means that could have been his last one. He does draw into... I mean, he gets the draw trigger, meaning that he's going to be able to hit with that um, Desert Gunner onto our other Lapier Shooter, but that's A-OK -okay by me, simply because, you know, I'm... I don't actually take any more damage this turn, so we're going to be able to seal the deer, seal the deal, not the deer. Sealing deers is not what we do in this on this channel. <laughs> That's absolutely not my hobby. Uh, so we're going to count us one here to look for another non-trigger. We're going to get ourselves a self-damager, actually. I'm going to grab that and just play it down as a booster right here. Take ourselves another damage. It might be a trigger, though. Keep in mind. Okay, it is a crit, but that's okay. I was prepared for this, and that's okay. So I'm going to call down this Gareth here as well, simply because I want to break good numbers. Uh, so let's just start with the aggro. Take out that perfect guard in his hand. He, I knew he had it. Absolutely knew he had it. And so now we're going to go in with this trip. He does not have another one because he has two perfect guards in the bottom of the deck, but he could heal here. He does still have all four of his heals ready, but he doesn't get it, and that's going to be the game. So, yeah. Uh, didn't really get to show too much of what the deck can do, so let's actually go for one more quick game. We actually go a Legend up uh, to Legend 2. As you can see, I'm really not taking rank seriously this season. I'll probably wait for the next one, but if the next one is a Vermilion season, I'm probably not going to play it either. And most likely just going to, I mean, play a little bit, of course, but not chase the rewards as much as I did the Azel. And just wait until the Maelstrom season, because that's going to be very cool when that comes up. And we more like, well, I mean, we don't know for sure that we're going to get a Maelstrom season, but... Based on the artwork that has been released, we can basically rest assured. Alright, let's go into our second game and hopefully this time be able to show some of that high roll magic that this Azel build can do. Of course, you can also play a lot of stands, but then with stands, the kind of your early damage does fall off a little bit because with this deck, the nice thing is also against a lot of decks, checking those early crits can help your late game aggro. This the strength of stands in Azel is that the problem with Azel actually is that Unlike Royals or Shadows, you don't get any Retire going for you. So basically you have no way of dealing with your opponent's front row if they have double intercepts. So you go like, you know, your rear into their rear, your rear into their rear, and then your Vanguard into their Vanguard. So if you don't run crits or stands, then you're basically not giving them the right amount of damage. And so that kind of sucks. Uh, here we're going to put back two cards. Hope for Gareth we don't get it, but we can still draw into it. going to have two shots out of four cards to potentially draw into it. We do not. We're gonna call, we're gonna ride the Dendrain. She's basically vanilla in hand because we can't put her back to deck outside of Pelinor. Although she's a very nostalgic card. Definitely very cool artwork to see. It's been a long time, Dendrain. You did some good work back in the Legion era. Honestly, Dendrain was a good card for a very, very long time. Until, I think until like Legion era when I think Bluish Flames got their own Dendrain. She was, oh yeah, yeah, until Liberators came out and Josephus was printed. That was like the upgraded Indrain. Oh, looks like we're facing a VP Farmer here. So we're actually gonna pass this game and go to the next one. All right, I actually had to go through the daily reset. <laughs> so now let's get on to the third game and try to close it out and show once again what this deck is made of. And now, of course, if I keep running into VP Farmer, it's gonna be awkward to close out the video on that. So no matter what, we're gonna do one more game and hopefully be able to showcase some of the DP love. Of course, even if we lose, if, if I'm able to show some of the nice things that the deck can do, it's also quite good. But basically the strengths are that it just, no matter how badly depleted your field gets, you can always bring it back and, you know, things like that. It's quite strong, honestly. Azel is tier one for a reason. Um, it's not the best deck, but definitely is a contender for the top and it's gonna be interesting looking forward. Ooh, we're facing Grand Blue. Ah, oh, but it's a VP Farmer again. All right. I am getting tired. It's 10 p.m. I want to sleep soon, but the VP farmers they keep on coming and giving. So when I play when I play ranked seriously and actually chase you know top tier um, in ranked season, I don't run into the VP farmers that much. But somehow, God, it really has been big lately. I think this guy might also be a VP farmer. Oh my God. Oh my god, this hand. I kind of hope this is a VP Farmer with this kind of hand. All three heals already gone. Honestly, this might be a genuine game and I'm just going to be great stuck. <laughs> just just surrender. Okay, it's not a VP Farmer. 
Oh my god, okay. This actually is the worst hand. I, think, I don't think I've ever had a hand this bad in my history of playing this game, but we drew into bow mains so it quickly fixed itself. Oh my god. Mini heart attack. I'm still not happy about drawing three of my heals because, you know, part of the point of this deck is to thin deck and hit your triggers when you don't have many normal units left in deck, but uh, we might not be able to do that this game, so we'll, we shall see how things go. If we can turn this around, you know, from this starting hand, if we can turn it around, I'm going to be really happy. Our opponent, with that first damage heal, or first drive check heal, is obviously very uh, nice in my eyes. And so now, we went second again. We didn't get to go first and show off Azel, but that's okay. At least we get to do the Criff Superior ride. And we're, our hand is packed with grade 3, so at least in terms of attackers, we're going to be a-okay. So, let's go. Juan Dazel Superior Ride, for some reason didn't select the SP one, unfortunately. We get a self damager, but it's way too early to use that yet. So we're gonna hold on to that for now. Call out some attackers. I'm actually gonna call out a bunch. Simply because this will become 14, you see? So, that's how it works. <laughs> so, uh, this way we can get two attacks in. Even if he hits the trigger here, I, can, I still have a chance to drive check one, but man. Already seven triggers out the deck is really sad. It's actually really sad. We get a crit. That's good. That's what we want to see. These early crits. You know. Yes, exactly. This is what we want to see. This is what we want to see. Take him to four damage while we're at one. This is what the deck wants to do. That's why you run these high crit numbers. All the blasters in the damage zone. Definitely happy to see that against an MLB opponent. Absolutely happy. So we're going to just pass turn here. And we're going to see what the counter attack will be. Whether he will actually uh, push damage enough. Does he even have blasters? That's a question too, right? He's going to find a blaster blade, but does he have the blaster dark in hand? That's another question. So, it's going to be interesting to see. Going to use that blaster blade to pop the back row Slagal uh, double edge. And going to call out a Palamedes. Followed by another Palamedes and a blaster dark, right? Has to be. Yes, there we go. So, he's going to give us... That sweet 3 damage, meaning that I can self-damage myself into 4. So we're going to take out our rears, which I think honestly isn't that necessary against Gold Paladin. Because, I mean, they just come back anyway at the low cost of a counter blast. And so here he's going to be able to use that sweet skill to suck up those blasters. Now he needs to heal quite a lot to actually bounce back here. We see the K, followed by a Lian. So we're going to go to 3 damage here. No way of healing out of it. So in this case, I'm actually pretty happy about that. And so now... He's going to be able to use the Wingle Brave to search himself another Blaster Dark. So we know that one of those cards is a Blaster Dark. And then the other two are Mysteries, but they could be Triggers or Perfect Guards. So, we're going to obviously start off with a Self Damager, take a Gareth to the damage. It's not a Trigger unit, so I'm pretty happy. Kind of must 1, Lopier Shooter, thank you, sir. You are very much needed right now. Get in here. Alright, Lopier Shooter comes down. Going to be able to use a skill. This card, the Slagle Double Edge. Ooh, another self damager. I quite like this. Ah, uh, Trip is also pretty good, but we need some boosters here. Let's call out a booster, make a 12k column here, get another self damager in, so maybe we can actually double heal or something. I don't think I even have. No, I, I only have one heal in deck. That's not going to be possible or happening. So, we have a Gareth in here. I think I will call that out because then we can hit a 17k column here. And our board is basically set here, actually. We're hitting for nice numbers, our Vanguard's at 32, so we can get over all kinds of triggers. I'm pretty happy with this, and we can basically force out a couple Perfect Guards if necessary, which is the maximum he could have, so let's just get into it. So, 14k attack goes first, hopefully doesn't hit a trigger here. He does not, meaning the 17k will actually hit, and let's see if he has a Perfect Guard in hand. He does not! Lop your shooter, potentially ending the game, and if not, Azel still has lots of firepower to come in. Okay, and that's game. As you can see, fast quick and easy. So this is the power of the 9 crit build. Now, of course you can go, oh, you should be playing draws, you know, I, I say myself that most decks need to be playing draws, but as you can see, this deck generates enough advantage, and like, the only reason why you would play more draws is so you can draw your Gareth and Bowmanes early, but you basically need them in your opening hand anyway, so the draws won't actually help that, because, you know, draws you play for the long-term investment. But yeah, as you can see, Azel can definitely do some cool things. Hazel is really strong. This is, once again, not the optimal variant of the deck, but it's cheap, 
literally like the only triple rare you need is Azel, and that's a rank reward. Uh, it'll be a rank reward in English as well at a certain point, and so as you can see, it's it really is the only triple rare you need. Um, Vivian and Pelinor can both be avoided in this build, and as you can see, it gives you gets you fast, quick wins and pretty convincing manner. So yeah. That's going to be basically it for this video. We have a lot of stuff coming this week, and honestly, we're just on the about to hit 30k subscribers too, and I have a lot of stuff planned for that, and I really am excited to unveil it all gradually. We're going to do quite a few celebration-related things over the coming weeks, and so it's a really huge milestone, the biggest, the one that I never even imagined in the Vanguard community, so I'm really excited to celebrate it with you guys. So, that's going to be it for today's video. This was the Azel deck and fight. Next time we're going to be taking a look at Angel Feathers. That's going to be tomorrow's video optimally, and so it's going to be very interesting to take a look at because Angels are one of my favorite clans, uh, especially ever since the G era, and so I'm really excited to showcase that as well as someone that's been very passionate about the clan for the last few years. So, that's going to be it for me today, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.